everyone, Benjamin Lindsay here, Managing Editor at Backstage. Um, if you're joining us this morning, uh, we're in for a treat. We're being joined by Javicia Leslie, who's the new star of Batwoman coming on The CW for its second season uh, next Sunday, January 17th. So really looking forward to uh, have her join us here. And I believe she might have uh, requested and I'll bring her up. And we're off to the races. Javisi, I see you there. So one second, make it happen here. Hey there, how are you? Hi. I, I'm Ben from Backstage. It's nice to meet you. Hi Ben, nice to meet you as well. Yeah, um, thanks for taking the time. I know that you're kind of in the middle of a press day. So um, I've been really looking forward to speaking with you about the new season of Batwoman. Um, congratulations, first of all. Um, yeah. such, such a huge deal and we're excited to see you on the screen there. Um, <laughs> I'm happy to make it happen. I'm glad yeah. we can make it happen. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. How are, how are you holding up in general? I know I'm, LA is kind of crazy right now. I'm good. I'm actually in Vancouver right now, and okay. we um, are, are I'm in quarantine. Um, so we're doing most of our press from home, and we got, like, the setup and everything to kind of yeah, exactly. <laughs> a little bit more seamless. But other than that, you know, I'm as good as you can be right now. Yeah, fair enough. So so when do you get off uh, to filming? Are, you're in quarantine now, so a couple weeks from now? or? Yeah, my first day back is the 19th. Gotcha. Okay, awesome. Um, well, uh, again, really excited to see you as this new character, Ryan Wilder, for season two of Batwoman. Um, just for our audience today, how about you tell us a bit about Ryan? She's new to the franchise, so uh, what can you tell us about her? So Ryan is kind of like, you know, I, I feel like she's kind of like your girl next door, depending on what neighborhood you live in. <laughs> um, she, you know, she grew up in the foster care. She grew up in foster care. And then she kind of went from home to home. Her mom died when giving birth to her. Uh, when she was in her early teens, she was finally adopted by who she considers her mother now. And life is just going really good for her finally. Um, and then her mother was killed in front of her. Wow. And it kind of changed her life. And, and, and um, she ended up kind of reconnecting with some old friends that weren't really good for her. And um, because of that, it led her to have to go to jail for 18 months for a crime she didn't commit. Mm. So when she came back out, it was really difficult for her to, you know, um, get back on track. It was difficult for her to get a job. It was difficult for her to um, get a house. So she started to live out of her van. Um, and then she stumbles on the bat suit. <laughs> and um, I, I believe I feel like when she first gets the bat suit, it ends up being her way of getting vengeance on mm -hmm. a city that has turned its back on people like her. Um, but as her journey goes on, she really becomes the hero that Gotham needs. Oh, that that's I mean, what a backstory for you to play with, first of all. I mean, I feel yeah. such a juicy role for any actor. Um, so, so what was the process like for you to really uh, find Ryan as an actor, um, to, to really figure out what she's going to look like on screen and uh, make it happen? So for me, you know, I got cast uh, July 9th. And literally, as soon as I got cast, um, Caroline Dries, our creator, mm -hmm. her and I got on a phone call. We started to break down Ryan's background. And with that, I was given all the ingredients that I needed and from you know, July 9th till September 3rd when we started filming, I spent an hour a day or hours a day at time, at times, um, just jumping into the world of my Ryan life. I take um, Diana Castle's The Imagine Life. Mm -hmm. And so with that class, it's all about um, really creating the world, really diving into it, feeling everything. I saw myself when I was in foster care. I saw my mom die in front of me. Um, I saw myself when I was homeless and looking for a place to live. I, I remember when I found my van and just really filling in all of the history. That way, when mm -hmm. I showed up to play, I was supported um, to the point that sometimes when Caroline and I talk, I, I tell her things. I'm like, well, you know <laughs> why that happened, right? Well, back when she was 16 years old, <laughs> Caroline's like, oh, you're I'm like, yeah, I am. <laughs> not bad, not bad. I, I of course, was... Uh, considering that we're speaking for backstage, I was going to ask about your training and just kind of your process. And it sounds like that imagined life approach uh, is really informative to, to what you're doing. Um, for me, you know, everyone I feel like probably has their own process. But for me, it, it's really supportive. It mm -hmm. makes me feel brave in everything I do because I already 
I'm, I am Ryan. And there's nothing you can tell me is wrong because I am Ryan. So if anything <laughs> is, you know, when it comes to working with the director, it's just about telling the story for the episode. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't change the work that I've done to support me as my Ryan life. And it just makes it fun and fearless and allows me to do things I probably would be scared to do had I not been so supported, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. At, at what point did you uh, kind of pick up that process? I know that you have quite an interesting road to Hollywood. My understanding is that you were living in D.C. for a while before just picking up and moving out there. So when did you yeah. start your craft in that way? So, um... I went to Hampton University um, mm -hmm. in Virginia, Hampton, Virginia. And there I, I started, that's really where I started to act. That's really where I started to learn how to act. That's really where I started to learn how to play on stage. But that's also where I started to realize that I needed because it was a therapy for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my, my play director, Lisa Evans, we did this play called For Color Girls. And doing for color girls, it allowed me to be able to fully express myself in so many different ways in one play because mm -hmm. I'm one person in the in the play. I'm, Javi I'm I'm Lady in Red, but Lady in Red represents so many different women, and like the the play is actually a core poem. So I'm I I do basically little mini mini plays within the play. Yeah. Um, and it allowed me to really be able to just be all of these different characters while being under this one house and really be able to express myself. And I found myself needing it every time I walked away. Like every mm. time we were we were done with rehearsal, I was just like, but I want to go back. Yeah. You know, because that's where my <laughs> safe haven was. That's where I felt like I could express myself fearlessly. Um, and then when I graduated from Hampton University, I went back to DC and I needed it. And so I, I linked up with my friend Dennis Williams and we created a play that I directed for him. And wow. it was just so much that I just wanted to stay active with. So my job, I was working for the Army, my contract came to an end and I took it as an opportunity to be able to go to LA. And you know, when contracts come to an end, they have to pay you. Mm -hmm. So I took it as an opportunity to go to LA and still have some kind of income. While I was there, I met my manager literally the, the first month that I was there. Wow. I, I auditioned for her. And it's so funny because I come from a theater background. So I auditioned for her with a monologue from Chicago. Okay. <laughs> She's like, okay, let's bring it down just a little bit. This is film and television. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, and then from there, you know, I, I found my, well, she found my agency. And I've been only with one other agency before this agency I'm with now, which is Stuart Talent. And, I, you know, it's just been like this process, this journey. And I started with uh, Creator Studio, which is an amazing studio. I think most actors that first moved to L.A. should start with Creator Studio right. because we do on camera work. And I think that that's really important in class. A lot of classes don't do on camera work and it allows you to see the things you do, the mm -hmm. little things that you do that can be distracting as an actor, as a film and television actor. Um, and then after I did that for a while, I was on, I was with Creator Studios for probably three or four years. And then I moved with, um, with the Imagine Life that I felt like helped me more with my, my connection to bring the humanity to all of my lives when mm -hmm. I play. Um, and then from there, I started doing uh, television. I did a Lifetime movie called mm -hmm. Killer Coach, MacGyver. Um, my first series regular role was God Friended Me. Uh, then I did the family business for BET. Um, my first leading movie outside of my lifetime movie was always a bridesmaid, which yeah. is still on Netflix. So everyone should, should everyone stream it. it. Yeah, get those streams <laughs> up, and then Batwoman. So yeah, it's wow. been a beautiful journey. It's had its ups. It's definitely had its downs, but I'm glad I didn't give up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I love seeing that you shared the other day on Instagram. Uh, you standing under the Batwoman billboard and kind of talking about how you manifested it through hard work, through, uh, you used to drive down, drive down Sunset Boulevard and uh, look at the billboards for inspiration. Um, True story. Yeah, I, I no, lived in West crazy. Hollywood off of Sweetser yeah. and I would drive up onto Sunset Boulevard and I would look at, the, but I always was, I was always very amazed by uh, billboards before I lived out in LA. So when sure. I lived in LA and there were so many, I was just like, oh my goodness. Oh wow, yeah. man, this is crazy! <laughs> I can't wait till this is me, you know. Right, right, so that could be I, you. Would, I would drive up there. I'd find different billboards at the time. I don't really remember all the billboards at the time, but I would find different billboards that I was inspired by, and I would sit under the billboard in my car, and I so I could still see it. I put my sides up on my dashboard, and I jump into my world while having an inspiration right in front of me. And yeah, it's interesting yeah. 
because I started doing that in 2012. And as time went on, it started to be my friends that I saw on the billboards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was even more cool because I knew it was like I was getting closer. Yeah, yeah. And then soon enough, here we are. Um, yeah. but, but of course, that, that doesn't come without hard work along the way, as, as you said in the Instagram post. Um, what's been the biggest challenge over the last few years and how did you overcome it? Um, I would say, you know, just it's really stuff within myself, mm -hmm. um, feeling, feeling talented enough, feeling good enough, feeling, um, feeling like I was worthy of even playing in this field, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so I did a lot of self work. I had to really reevaluate my purpose and, you know, questioning whether I'm supposed to be here is like questioning God's, God's doing, and you mm -hmm. can't do that. I can't do that. Right. You know, I'm, I'm supposed to be here. I'm here for a reason. And my purpose is now going to allow other people to fulfill their purpose. Um, so I just had to constantly remind myself of that. I had to constantly remind myself that it's bigger than me, you yeah. know, and that, that was enough because sometimes you're not enough. Sometimes you aren't, you, you can't inspire yourself enough, mm -hmm. at least for me. Mm -hmm. But when I took it outside of myself and I started to realize like, oh my God, like all of our purposes are connected and I have to do this. That mm -hmm. made it where that, that made it where I was able to, to finally just be brave and jump. And yeah. I jumped and like, I've done it before. I moved to LA, you know, right. I left everything and why couldn't I do it again? So yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I, I like this idea. Um, obviously, you're, you're approaching it from a, a person of faith, um, something bigger than you and a purpose and whatnot. I think that that also relates to this series, though, in terms of being bigger than itself, because it is such a big deal that you're the first Black woman to inhabit the famous uh, bat suit. Um, you are a queer woman playing a queer woman on screen. Um, can you just speak about what it means in, in terms of being bigger than you? Um, what it means to kind of be inhabiting that space on camera. Completely bigger. You know, I don't walk around saying, hi, my name is Javisi. I'm black, I'm queer, I'm this, I'm that. Sure. Like, I don't walk around introducing my titles. I just walk in my truth and I am who I am. And with that, um, it, it was very, at first it was just very difficult for me because I've spent a long time separating myself from titles, you know? Mm -hmm. um, just with the people I've surrounded myself with now, my tribe, we, we, that's, that's something that we practice. We really separate ourselves from that because we're really, we're just, we're spirits more than we are titles, you know? Um, but I understand the power of them because unfortunately our world is all filled with titles. And because of that, you know, it's, it, it's allowed titles to be the thing that divide us in a negative way versus mm -hmm. uplift us. And so I remember growing up and not seeing women that look like me on the screen, especially in action, especially in action. I don't really think we fill up the screen in action now. I think it's very, you know, far and few. We have some amazing mm -hmm. women that are doing the Viola Davis now is doing the Woman King. And we have, you know, um, we have Regina King and we have we have them now, but it's still not in abundance as it yeah. is in other other races, you know. And I just think that for me, it was very important that little girls, little boys, little people <laughs> can now see another person that looks like them on screen doing a role that they feel like that, like that is connected to them. Because mm -hmm. when I was growing up, I was very connected to the Bat Batman uh, franchise. I, I mean, it's the most epic franchise in, in the superhero franchise, you know what yeah. I mean? And it's Batman, come on. So it's just like <laughs> to be able to see a black superhero play either of those roles is very epic and I feel like it's it's necessary and I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be able to play it you know Batwoman is gay in the comics and so mm -hmm. they were already breaking down doors with that and I love that that was already the case and so mm -hmm. now to bring in a woman of color to play the role um, I just feel like it's more inclusive it's it's here's the thing and this is something that I think is really important to understand the bat the, the suit itself already represents a hero right Right. You know what I mean? Anyone can put the suit on. Anyone. And it's like, why can't we all be a hero at, at some point? Why can't we all play this superhero at some point? I don't think that there should be a race that's connected to these superheroes. Yeah. Um, so I'm just, I, I'm really happy to be a part of this journey. I'm really happy that, you know, um, there, you know, my grandkids will be able to say, my grandma was Batwoman. And yeah. there are some little girls that are going to be able to say, oh, I remember when I first got cast there was this little girl with this big curly afro. Mm -hmm. She said to her dad, hey dad, 
that woman looks like me. Like, yeah, that's yeah. just not a common thing. So I love that we're able to to represent a very underrepresented community. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that you're speaking about it with reverence, but also acknowledgement that it's just the way that it should be. There shouldn't be a first in in, in that sense, but. Um, it, it, it is a big deal. It, it's a big deal and congratulations on that. Um, in terms of taking up the action space, you also mentioned that, uh, or uh, I'm aware rather, that you do your own stunts on the show. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a bit about that just in terms of that prep work and what the challenges to doing those stunts were? So um, I was already studying, you know, Muay Thai and Bo Staff before I booked the role. I started studying Muay Thai, I believe, two years before that. Mm -hmm. And then Bo Staff, we started to incorporate in our training um, within the year. Um, so, and then when quarantine happened, I was really mm -hmm. just able to play with all of that. Um, so when I booked the role, it was kind of like, a coincidence that it all kind of connected like that mm -hmm. and it's so dope because really when you're when you're already studying any type of form of martial arts you start to speak a language mm -hmm. um so when i came to the stunt team we we already started to, we already knew what each other were talking about we already spoke the same language and yeah. it made it so much easier for us to do our stunts and our choreography um now don't get it don't get it twisted i am unable to do all of my stunts obviously sure. one because of time too, because of just ability, you know, my yeah. stunt double, Aisha, is just, like, amazing. She's, like, doing all kinds of crazy things. But <laughs> what I love about my stunt team is that they have so much trust in me to allow me to do so many things. Like, I'm the one that's always flying in and out. You know, I do my mm -hmm. own fights. Um, I do a lot of my stuff. Like, the only thing I can say that probably isn't me is when there's a flip involved. Because okay. I have, like, this fear of, like, <laughs> breaking my neck trying to do a flip. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> so, like <laughs> not so that might be like the only thing that isn't for sure me otherwise yeah. you may not be able to tell the difference um yeah. i think now what we try to do is like use me for the on-camera footage and anytime it's something where it's a turnaround and you're getting the other person and i have to go do another scene aisha mm -hmm. does that got it got it um well yeah i mean it's you're playing double duty in terms of the physicality of the role the emotional heft that you got to bring to it um it's it's just a great role for, for you though. Congratulations. Um, Thank as, you. As a final question, I know our time is running up here. I feel like it flew by. I know, um, I feel like we were running for five minutes. I know, exactly, exactly. It's been great having your ear for a moment. Um, again, backstage, our audience is kind of those working actors of the world. And we talked a bit about your journey through LA, those early days. If there's one piece of advice that you would give uh, that to Vicia from 2012, what would it be? It's simple. Like you're, you are not even just enough. You're more than enough. Mm -hmm. Everything that makes you different and unique is going to be what makes you win. Don't walk away from it. Stop trying to blend in. Don't try to be like anyone else. Stop trying to find actors that you admire to emulate. Mm -hmm. Be yourself and be the higher and best version of yourself and constantly continue to contribute to your craft, continue to grow in your craft, continue to take classes, continue to build on other types of form forms of art because it's all gonna it's all gonna be included. Like I started to <laughs> learn the guitar and then I did a role that included playing the guitar. Like just constantly build on your craft and understand that everything that you do to build on it is going to play at some point in your career. Mm. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, um, I'm so happy to see the success that you found. Congratulations again. And uh, really looking forward to the second season, seeing what Ryan gets up to. On the Thank CW. you. Everyone Thank tuning you in again. Me. That's uh, January 17th. Yes. Uh, on the CW. Um, so 8 tune in. And uh, thanks for your time. Congrats. Thank you. Bye-bye.